for our English speakers that are listening and would like to enjoy a word, a phrase, an expression that is of God. Let us pray first that everything that comes from my mouth is good for teaching, training, reproving, meaning getting us back right with God, even me, and for all righteousness. Now, let's think of John 3.16. Everybody knows that's one of the most popular scriptures for Christmas, which just passed. And what does it say? Someone put it in the comments and say it out loud. <sighs> Basically, it says, God gave his only begotten son so that the world may believe and go to heaven. What does that mean? It means we are imperfect people and need God in our lives to lead us in the right direction. So we are to look to his scriptures, his word, which is the Holy Bible. And if you go to church every Sunday, if you go to Bible study, please don't rely on just your pastor or your priest. Have a personal relationship with God. Go and in your quiet secret place or wherever it may be, take a few minutes or a few hours, whatever. I know you have the time. Now, read and let it just absorb and marinate in you. And start with Psalms and Proverbs and some of the New Testament and even the Old Testament. You don't have to read from beginning to end and be uh, a scholar or a theologian or become a pastor or a priest. But have a personal relationship because it's good. I was trained and... Uh, instructed. It's good to memorize your favorite scriptures for when maybe you're sad or very stressed. And um, just to memorize it is to write it on the tablet of your heart, which is um, a way to envelop and let God speak to you even more and remind you he loves you and this too shall pass someone taught me that when you're having problems or just life's not going your way and life's not always going to go your way even if you're of God a believer and a Christian you know bad things happen to good people and for whatever reason it's in God's plan to make you stronger, to make you resilient, to give you a story to tell of how God brought you out of it and how you grew and how you matured and how you became, yes, better in so many ways. In James, it says, count it all joy when you go through many trials and tribulations, for out of it, it builds your character, builds endurance. And in the end, yes, you grow, you mature, and you have wisdom for life. And let God be the light to your path because he is and you are the apple of his eye. Don't ever forget that he loves you wherever you are in life, whomever you are, whatever age, whatever race, whatever. He loves you. He created you in his image. And if you don't believe me, 
pick up a Bible and look in Genesis. We are created in his image. And furthermore, let me just um, specify that prayer on a daily basis or a continuous basis is healthy for your spiritual life. Don't ever forget God is with you. He's with everybody. I know that's unfathomable that someone, well, he's not a someone. He's God, supreme being, our creator, so magnificent, our majesty, our father, and he loves you. Just reach out to him in silence or out loud. You know you've done it before, even if you don't want to admit it's happened. That's because intuitively, basically, our instinct is to love that one who created us. Even as children, we embrace God, even if he's not mentioned in our family. Eventually, we know he exists. Even by mentioning him, atheists know he exists. And atheists is those who say God isn't real. But logically, if they say God and acknowledge God, they acknowledge he exists, correct? I'll leave you with that. God bless you. Enjoy your Sunday of rest. And be of good cheer. Make a joyful noise for yourself and most of all for the Lord. Listen to some positive, encouraging Christian music and let it marinate in you. And yes, it's a good feeling and it's meant for you. And God loves you. Bye.